Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm joined by Tom. We are going to be looking at the Premier League for this coming season and what we predict. I mean, I say looking at, we're just going to be talking about it. Um, let's start with Norwich. We're both Norwich fans, so yeah. how, do we, how do you think the Norwich season's going to go? Well, I hope it goes really well, obviously. Okay. However, <laughs> obviously, with the money in the game nowadays... It's it's hilarious looking at the fact of like you know the two teams that have gone up with us. One spent 130 odd million. One spent 20 odd million. We spent 1.5. <laughs> so going I mean, on the whole of the Premier League, everyone is expecting us to go down. Technically, we've spent four million because we spent three three million on Ralph Fairman on loan, or like two is three million euros. So about 2.5 million on that. What for his wages? No, for his loan. We paid the loan fee. Oh, have we? Yeah, two point two point five million pounds roughly, and then Patrick Roberts. I think we had, there was a small loan fee as well, mm. and then obviously Dermot was on a free, and then Sam Byron was seven hundred and fifty k. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, that, honestly, that Sam Sam Byron deal, I think as a good backup business. right back, that's a great bit of business. I like, think I think all of our business has been fantastic this year. To yeah, give, I mean, give everybody get... contracts, and I think the thing is, you look at our starting eleven from last season, plenty yeah. good enough. Everyone, everyone's now got a new contract. Dermich on a free, I think, could be as again a kind of masterstroke like Pookie. Maybe you know, maybe obviously. Pookie's I don't think he's going to go scoring twenty nine goals. No, not in the Premier League, but as in just effectiveness on yeah. free, you can't in a way rarely go that wrong. Even if he does a bad job like, and then in a year we sell him for like two million. Yeah, you've made a profit. Like Exactly. Yeah, uh, I mean you can't really so but yeah. Signing player on a free is pretty much risk free. Mm. But yeah I'd, I'd say straight away like uh you know we're we're immediately now expected to go down mainly because we haven't spent much and you know that everyone is kind of judged now on how much you kind of spend. But I think we could surprise a few, and I hope we do stay up because we play some great stuff. We we do play some brilliant stuff. We've got a really top fitness level, which will be very important for the Premier League. Um, and we've got technical quality, which I think can work in the Premier League. I think it does. I think if quality. you if you have some you know players like Emi Buendia, mm. Onel Hernandez will be really good mm. in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, Honestly, the two friendlies that I recently went and watched uh, for Norwich, which were against Atalanta and uh, Toulouse, uh, even though we lost against Atalanta, I was extremely impressed in both games with Ben Godfrey. Just I guess honestly, you could say Toulouse set out to lose. Yeah, yeah, probably. That was terrible. Um, basically, uh, I was I was extremely impressed with him. His for one, he is our fastest centre back. His, I think his pace in the Premier League will be incredibly important. He looks really strong, really like physical. He's determined as well. Like if a ball's played through, he's going to get there first before the centre forward. That was what he was looking at. And even in like eighty plus minutes, he is still sprinting, you know, to get there before centre forward. I was really, 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 really impressed with him. I think he's going to be a very important centre back this season because if he uh, is at the team. All our other centre backs are li are brilliant physically, headers, clearances, stuff like that. But in the Premier League, when you got players like Salah, Mane, Aguero, and so forth running through against you, our centre backs aren't going to catch them apart from Godfrey. That's no. the only thing. <laughs> That's the only thing uh, that I'm worried about. I don't about, think many of our midfielders would catch him either. I exactly. Think Godfrey is probably about the only player who would. That's why I think we do need him in, the, in there. But. Um, yeah, I think he could be inc incredibly important, really, for us. Um, so, yeah, obviously, you know, I hope we stay out, obviously. Okay, so who's going to be our player of the season and where do we finish in the league? See, that's, that's tough. Obviously, I, um, I hope we finish 17th. 17th I, I hope not. I ha 17th and above. I hope we finish, like, I don't know, I, I think between 12th and 15th. Hmm. That kind of so area. I'm not going to be like too there'll be a few there'll like, be at least three teams worse than us 100 um, percent I hope it's just about where in that mix you know you look at your, yeah. your Burnleys your Bournemouth your Watford but we're going to be in the mix of them teams I think we're a team built on confidence as well and I yeah. think if our confidence is knocked a lot it could potentially my affect one us. concern is that last year we never really had like everything going against us yeah exactly 
And this also, year, there will be times where we go three, four, five games where just nothing goes yeah, our way. And also, when we lost a game or drew a game, we could kind of immediately go back and either draw or win. And this season, it's not going to happen. Like you might get, you know, three losses in a row. That's just how it is. Yeah. Like we're in a few opening a few games. We're playing what? Uh, I don't doubt Liverpool, our mentality. Chelsea but... and Arsenal. Yeah. Is it within the first five games? Uh, we got Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool away. We've got Newcastle at home, Chelsea at home, West Ham away, and then Man City at home. And then Man City, yeah. So, so that's it's a tough start. <laughs> it's tough, that's how it is. But uh, that's the Premier League, we, that's why we want to be there. Yeah, um, I mean, that's, so, that's yeah. what we earned the right to do. Obviously, I hope teams. we finish in a position which isn't a relegation zone. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I really can't think of a player of the season because it depends, like, obviously. I mean... Of course, it depends, but, but but like, who would stand out to you from pre-season or who from what you watched last season? Who would stand out to you and you'd be like, yeah, in the Premier League, they will be amazing? I would say Godfrey. I would also potentially say uh, Bandia may be incredibly important. He played two beautiful passes in some of the friendlies, like that, as in passes that really, really stood out, like through balls. He was, like, passing the ball around everywhere. I like as well how... Say if he got a corner wrong or a free kick wrong, he was kicking himself. He was really annoyed. Like he yeah. was, he because he sets himself like such a high standard. Such a high standard. And honestly, if he's playing, if he plays some decent, really good through balls, as you know, sometimes you just can't defend against him. And I think that's what will be important for us because that's where we'll get some of the goals from. I actually think, even though we do tend to play the ball out wide a lot, I think our central midfield is going to be crucial. Mm. Tribal, Leitner and Vrancic, I think one of them three is going to be surprisingly very good. Mm. Tribal obviously is a tough tackler. He can win the ball back and then get play going again. Whereas Vrancic, you know, his free kicks are just incredible. And then obviously you've got uh, Leitner's passing. He can just pass the ball anyway. But anyway, enough talking about Norwich. We've... I would say as well, very quickly, however. <laughs> yep. Obviously, because I love talking about Norwich. <laughs> But also, he impressed me. Impressed me when he came on. Apparently, he hadn't his fitness hadn't been up like too great. He hadn't been up with the standard of the other players. But Vrancic, he came on in both friendlies, and just the difference with him. Like he's always so silky. Like he's passed the ball around. Like it's really easy. Like you know. I mean, it is really easy from Vrancic. For, for him, it's just he makes everything look so graceful, uh, and. Some of his finishing has been brilliant, but also I was just really also impressed with some of his tackling and some of his strength that he's really worked on. Like Do you know winning the ball back is his. He was like shoving people out of the game. I was like, "What is this, Vrancic? What has happened to him?" Do you know who we've overlooked? And I'll I'll talk about this more in the Newcastle vlog. Mm. Uh, Todd Cantwell. Yeah. Oh, I. He yeah, was fantastic in him. preseason. In both of them, in both of those games, he'd vastly improved. That, 100%. Like, which I was so happy for him. Like, the last time I saw a player improve that much over a summer was John Ruddy when we went into the Premier League. Mm. He came back from... When we when we got promoted, he came back looking a completely different player. Mm. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to move on now. Um, so we've both basically said we want that we think Norwich are going to survive. I so hope, hope. who's the three teams that you think will uh, get relegated? Who's going to go down? And who's going to just survive? See, I may say, um, like, they're probably in the same boat as us, but Sheffield United may possibly, I think, struggle just... I don't know. They brought. I know they've brought in Ollie McBurney, but is he going to be... You never know sometimes. Like you say, it was some annoyed to sign. Is he going to be good enough? You never know. Um, I just think also like who they bought Freeman from QPR. I think Freeman will be a good sign. I think Jack like Yelkin, nine million. He's a bit old. Like you just like I don't know. Are they gonna Are they gonna do? It? However, Chris Wilder drills his teams incredibly well, so they I can think... do it. They but if it's you could make then similarities between him and Neil Warnock, and as well as Cardiff try their best, they still went down. So, but I think for me the key thing will be. Do they, do they adjust their tactics? If so, what to? Overlapping centre-backs will not work in the Premier League. Mm. You're not going to hold on to the ball long enough to be able to have overlapping centre-backs. And then at that point... I still don't get and, that. and also, if you have overlapping centre-backs, 
Why Seinfeld Jagielka? <laughs> he's the one to stay in the middle. <laughs> yeah, he, he must be, he's got to be the one who stays. I, I really still don't get uh, overlapping centre backs. No, really you leave yourself it. way too exposed. But I mean, it worked in the Championship. But yeah, I don't the think League, I would have thought. if they if they go with that tactic in the Premier League, yeah. teams will just pick them apart. Um, as a surprise one, I may actually say um, Newcastle. No. No, it's not a surprise for me. I would, like, 100%, I would say Newcastle are down. There's well, two bankers for me, Newcastle and Brighton. Decent signings, I know, but there's, like, as in um, St. Max, what's his name? St. Maximus, I can't remember yeah. what his name is. Because I saw him on FIFA before, and he is excellent. Don't go by FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so you never know, but then they've signed that £40 million striker who I've never heard of. Um, they've also got Steve Bruce as manager. Like there's a few things They've sold there I think, Perez. Yeah, there's a few things there that I think could potentially go wrong. Yeah, I think when, when your top striker is uh, Alm- Almiron, is it? Who they signed in January? I think he's, he's more the... of like centre attack and midfielder, but yeah. So and they've they also got rid of Rondon. Oh, yeah. Who have Newcastle or, got up front? Uh, they still, they've still got Dwight Gale, haven't they? Yeah, he's gone back now, yeah. So he might, I think. He might be decent for them. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, no, the, in terms of, I think the fact that they've got Steve Bruce as manager, I don't think he's going to If they take had still forward. had uh, Rafa Benitez in charge, I would have said they stayed up. Yeah. Cause, just because he's such a brilliant manager. He would have been and able to find not, a way. He did not deserve to be, like, not supported as he did in Newcastle. That's Mike Ashley for you, though. But then the thing is, he won't support Rafa Benitez, but then he goes and supports, mm. you know, £40 million pound signing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That I know, sense, obviously, doesn't... most of that would have come from the £30 million pounds from Perez, but just support your manager. Oh, Especially that... somebody like Rafa Benitez, who's done so much to get them up and establish them. Yeah, exactly. I would also say, for my third relegated team, I would probably say Brighton. Yeah, see, Newcastle and Brighton are two of mine. But, I'm stuck for the third one. Mm. But, go on, Brighton. Yeah, no, I mean, they really struggled last year. And their new manager, who was at Swansea last year, uh, he's done incredible things with teams in the past. Honestly, with Swansea, with really, really limited budget last season. And, you know, uh, kind of a disjointed... We're talking about why they're going to go down. You're not supposed to big up the manager. <laughs> no, I know, I know. But, you know, he'd done, you know, he'd done really well... Swansea, to be fair, and also... I don't think he did. He'd uh, done well at that club before that he'd been at. Uh, where oh, they've got... Uh, Norgeland. Yes, stuff like that, yeah. And they got through in the Europa League, that faced Arsenal, and they gave him a real good game. And he'd gotten promoted various times as well. Okay, so why do you think that Brighton's going to go down then? <laughs> I don't Well, it depends how he does in the Premier League. That's that's all. I mean, he he may be... He may do it. He may, it's... it's it's again. It's really hard to tell until you like get into the season how things are gonna kind of settle in. Plus, if things aren't going too well, like the whole reasons kind of I'm saying things may go completely out of the window because he'll be sacked. They bring someone else in. They'll start doing brilliantly. Like that's, that's true. everything changes through the season. Okay, yeah, but we're asking you to just difficult. make a prediction here. Like it's yeah. not that difficult. Yeah. Well, right Obviously, now. we know anything can happen, but mm. yeah, um, yeah. I'd... So for me, Newcastle. Brighton, and then one of Sheffield United, Burnley, or Bournemouth for mm. me, or or Aston Villa. Obviously, Sheffield uh, United we've spoken about. I think, uh, yeah, I don't think Aston Villa will go down. Just, I mean, I, I know think they've got they've signed too many players to be able to get them all in working properly. I know Aston Villa fans will argue back and they'll say, well, um, three of them were there last season. All of yeah. Few of them were on loan. They've all either worked with Dean Smith or like they've come in in pairs where they know each other. But just because they know each other doesn't mean they're then going to fit in with the rest of the squad. Mm. So it you may bring work in brilliantly. It may not. Yeah. So I remember. So okay. So you bring in two wingers who work well together. That doesn't necessarily mean that either of them is going to work well with the striker or with the fullbacks. Yeah. So they've got a lot of people coming in to try to fit in to the side, to fit into the culture. It's going to be tough because they've signed, I think they've signed 11 players. 13. 13. Is it 13 now? I think it's 13. I can never keep up. 
obviously they got rid of 14, so they did have to, and I appreciate that for the Villa fans, but I think it's a lot of players, especially so soon to the season. Mm. I know obviously they've tried to get it done early. If you had, say, if you'd got it done like right at the beginning of the window, then yes, but you literally, some of the players weren't even there until like two, three weeks before the season started, and they've got to try to fit in with everybody, which... The th- every single player has got to learn every other new player and every other player who is already at the club. Yeah. For the players who's already at the club, they've then got to learn 13 new people. It's it's a lot to do. Oh, well, 10, because obviously three of them were already there last season. Mm. But that is a it's a big job to do. And obviously and make comparisons with Fulham. Spending I'm not. I'm not going to make 100 million and going down. Like it the, can happen. The thing with Fulham, though, I what? swear they only bought like five, six players with that. Like they bought big money players. They bought hundred, spent hundred million on five, six players. I think there's a couple more, maybe not as much as Aston Villa. Definitely. No, not as many as Aston Villa. But Aston Villa's or, fees mean, were smaller ish on average, mm. but more players. Um, we'll see how it goes, but. I mean... Burnley and Bournemouth, see, I really like the way that they've gone about it since they've become Premier League clubs. Yeah. They've gone about it, gone about their business very well. Bournemouth have played, played a blinder in the last few transfer windows. Maybe not necessarily in terms of players they've signed, but in terms of... Who is it? Well, they I sold think, I think... Tyrone Mings for £26 million, um, or £20 million rising up to £26 million. That is an incredible bit of business from Bournemouth's side of things. Aston Villa, you got conned, basically. I, yeah, I don't like Tyrone Mings. I think he'll get suspended too much because when things aren't going his way, he lashes out. Um, or just because he doesn't like people. He's done it twice before. He likes stamping on people's heads, don't he? Yeah. Um, even one while at Villa, and yet still they decide, like, yeah, this is a £26 million player. But um, <laughs> I love the fact Alex Pritchard's playing in the Championship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, again. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be a difficult one. That final relegation spot for me is going to be difficult. But I mean, the it reason may be, I say it may be us. the reason I say by I I'm going to disagree with you when you talk about Graham Potter because I don't think he did a good job with Swansea. I think he had the players, he had a bit of a financial backing, maybe not necessarily enough. You know, you look at your players like Leroy Fair and. Nursing in midfield. You had IU. Who else did you have there? Leon, I'm sure Leon Britton was still playing for them last year. They had the players to get certainly much higher up the table than what they did. Um, I, I think he's he's a good coach, but I don't know if he can necessarily progress. Did you say Daniel James? James. Dan- oh, Daniel James as well. No, I've completely forgot about him. He's just gone to Man United. Yes. Um, hmm. So I don't, I don't necessarily think he's going to make them progress. If they manage to stay up, it will be one of them. A lot like Newcastle, where it literally just happens that three teams have had an awful season. Um, not because they're you know Premier League quality. I just, I don't see it. But then having said that, striker like Lacadia, he'll be scoring goals. You would think uh, Glenn Murray would. No, Glenn Murray play for Brighton anymore? Yeah. I think he does. Yeah, he's still Brighton, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, sh- he should get a few, maybe. It'll- it's a difficult one for relegation this year, to be fair, because I'm thinking about it now, and I'm like, Watford could potentially be down there if they have... It's one of them where, I, if they have I, a good I, season, they could be looking at Europa League. If they have yeah. a bad season... Yeah, what they'll be I looking think at relegation. Just because Watford have done so well in the last few seasons with generally kind of with transfers and everything and managers and even though they've kept chopping and changing managers, it's, it seems to work for them. Like they're they getting a new managers. manager, they do relatively well. For some reason they leave, they get a new one, they do relatively well. I mean, last season, what they get to the FA Cup semi final, was it? Yep, and lost to Wolves. Yes. Um, was it that? Yeah, I think it was Wolves they lost to. Was it Man City? No. No, Wolves lost to Watford, didn't they? Yeah, they got to the final. Yeah, Watford got to the FA Cup oh. final, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They lost um, to Man City, but... 
So I Clearly, think they've we done don't really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, I think they finished top half as well. I think I think Watford will be fine. I think it's like the Sheffield United, Brighton's, Newcastle's, us. Um, obviously, you know, you see Burnley. They had a fantastic season. They got in the Europa League. Uh, then, obviously, that season they had a bit of a wobble. Wobble. But, yeah. Uh, they kind of managed to get through it. Um, and then you know, I think because sh- I, I do think Sean Dykes is a really. Good I think he's. A, well. I think he's a good manager, but he's I do think that manager. they're overdue a bad season. Mm. Like, I know obviously you could say last year was do, a bad but, season. Um, who have they signed anyway? Burnley. Did they sign James Rodriguez? From, is it James Rodriguez? Um, I have no idea. Was that just because I've got Hammers Rodriguez in my That's head? That's just because you've got <laughs> Hammers Rodriguez in your head from West Brom. Oh, Jay Rodriguez. Jay, that's it. Yes. Yeah, I've got Hammers Rodriguez in my head. Yeah, because Jay Rodriguez returned to them, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's good, he'll be a good player for there. them. That's a good signing. I would have been happy with him at Norwich. To and be obviously, fair. they signed Peacock Farrell as a replacement for Heaton. <laughs> mm. But I think they'll play Pope because he's a brilliant goalkeeper. Yeah, see, the thing is with Burnley, they've got so many good goalkeepers. Like, I remember Are they one still got season. Heart? I don't know if they've still got Hart. I think he signed a two year contract, so yes. Yeah. Um, I remember one year they he was they had three really good goalkeepers and it wasn't this year just gone it was a year before I um, think they had Heaton started off with Heaton Pope he got injured Hart. Nick Pope came in and I don't think I'm counting surely I'm not counting Joe Hart as the good goalkeeper I don't know but anyway uh, top six or top six. seven top well, eight well I think the top two top, top four. Oh yeah I think the top two it will be between Liverpool and Man City again. I just still, at this moment in time, can't see anyone challenging them with how well they're doing at the minute. That could change throughout the season. Because I'm going to have to disagree with you on this one. I don't think Liverpool will be top two. And this may be me being biased, but I think you look at how many games last year they had to win through getting a dodgy decision. Mm. You look at the... Newcastle games, both of them, where, uh, Sa- well, first one Salah dived, second one Fabinho dived. If Fabinho doesn't dive and get the free kick, they don't win that one 3-2. Uh, you look at Cardiff, he had to d- Salah had to dive for a penalty. I know, obviously, in some of them, he didn't necessarily get them, but there was a, a run of games in a row. There was Man City, there was Brighton, Newcastle, and I think Crystal Palace. Uh, where Salah dived four in, four games in a row, and they're not going to get away with it this year. I think they had a fair bit of you luck, like to think. for sure. But I think they've still got the quality that is... I think... I think they've still got the quality that's needed. Um, they, they probably do, but they're certainly... Okay, it's certainly not going to be as close. Like, yeah, well, I mean, as in... Man City's just going to They might, they might not get as many points, like both of them, really. But, I mean... I, I, I'm trying to think back, and this is probably me just not remembering them, but I don't really remember a game where Man City won because of a dodgy decision. Mm. Like I don't remember them getting a dodgy penalty and then sitting there and being like, well, that's changed the game. <laughs> but having said that, I probably yeah. haven't just didn't watch enough um, football last year. Yeah, I do then think Spurs were... Honestly, like Spurs have done really well in pre-season, so again, they could surprise you. They could end up Challenge in those two as well potentially, because uh, I think uh, what's his name? Is it M M Dumbele? In M- Dumbele, yeah. In Dumbele, uh, he looks like a decent signing. Apparently, they're interested in Ryan Sesson Young right now. Which, if I'm just saying, if Pochettino does with what he's done with Ali and what he's done with Kane, from where they've came from, not even necessarily that. I think it's, like, it was then clear. Then he turned into an excellent player. It was clear that Ryan Sessegnon is a quality player. Mm. But last year, were they playing him left back? Mm. Fulham. Well, he was in the championship partly. He's like really good but at attacking left back. But he left, can play left wing, wing though, as well. when he was left wing at Fulham, he tore teams apart. Mm. If Tottenham sign him, and he goes to left wing or you know left mm. mid. Uh, he will go back to tearing teams apart again. Yeah, I think um, I think he could. With and Pochettino, with better there, I think, as well. yeah, with Pochettino there, I think he could really help him out. He could turn into a really decent player. Uh, so Tottenham, yeah, I think they could challenge. I think that will be the top three: Man City, Liverpool, Tottenham. That will be a top three. Uh, I'd agree with that. For that 
kind of four spot, I mean, you could have different reasons. You could say Man United obviously want to get back to where they are. Obviously, fourth place for Man United is still going to be kind of bad compared to where they really want to be. They want to be challenged for that title. Yeah. But unless they sign like a really decent striker between now the thing is, the window, I, would, I rate I, Rashford. I, I, I think Rashford's really good. But. Yeah, I, I do, but I don't... Uh, or just, like, someone else other than, like, Harry Maguire, whether they'll have enough money now, who knows. But I think they obviously don't like Lukaku. They obviously don't like Pogba. Um, so what's going to go on there is there's still going to be, like, kind of divides between the teams. Are they going to work hard enough? Who knows? Obviously, they've got that James now as well. We'll just we'll just have to see how it goes. But obviously, Man United want to be challenged challenged for that title. I can only still see them challenging for the top four. I can't and obviously, see them. and obviously, that's going to be between Man United, Chelsea, and Arsenal again. Chelsea, uh, obviously, Frank Lampard's there now. They could have a spirited run with him in charge. Obviously, they seem to be loving his management because obviously Lampard's a really nice guy. I really love him as a manager. I think he's excellent. Uh, I think, I think, um, I think between uh, him and Gerard, I think Lampard is actually it's that conversation again. I think Lampard's a better manager, as in he seems nicer to his team. When Gerard talks about his team, he seems to criticise a lot. Yeah, I agree like, with you on that one, but I think I I would say Gerard overall is the better manager mm. because. You look at what Frank... And this is why I don't think that Frank Lampard is anywhere near ready mm. for Chelsea. Um, he he took a side which finished sixth. He sold some players. He brought some players in on loan from big clubs. He... I don't think he actually spent that much, though, did he? But he, he improved the side. They bought better players. Still finished sixth. But I think a few managers have done that with Derby. Like, they're still going into the playoffs, and they've just failed in the playoffs. Like, the same with the managers when they had, like, their kind of March slump. Derby's typical, like, February-March slump, isn't it? Yep. Uh, and how many managers went through that? So, like, that's that might just be a Derby thing, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately for them. But, yeah, I think, obviously, they could end up having a spirited run, Chelsea, and then Arsenal. They've just signed that, uh, what's his name? That winger. Nice or whatever his name is. Oh, Nicolas Pepe. Yeah, Pepe. Sem- they, they don't have any money to spend on players, and then suddenly they've got 70 million pounds. Yeah, they've got 72 the million. Yeah. Well, apparently and it's not gonna, even the winger they need. Apparently they're going to pay in instalments. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, they need a centre back. Their defence is still shocking. Uh, but, you know, they could, when you've got uh, Pepe, uh, Aubameyang, and Lacazette in attack, I mean, the other end of your team has still got to be worried. To Even if you see. think, oh, we can attack this Arsenal team, you still got to be wary that you've got three excellent players at the other end of the field who, yeah, nothing to worry even about. if you've been dominating the game, they'll get one chance and they will put it, put it away. Like Arsenal That's fine. They some... can have their one chance. We'll just take our four. Yeah, yeah. No, they've got they've got some excellent players. They do have a good attack. goalkeeper, though, in like, Wendell. They're going to like, full-on attack and he's a decent goalkeeper, yeah. So, I think... From 4th, 5th and 6th, again, it'll be between Man United, Chelsea and Arsenal. I don't know who's going to get that 4th spot, because it could go anyway. Okay, so um, I'm going to have to actually throw another team into the mix, because I think there will be a surprise team in the top 6, and I think Man U will finish 7th. Mm. I think... Could be Leicester. Um, Potentially. It will be between Leicester, Wolves and Everton. Or Wolves. Or Everton. Yeah. To be fair, I mean, I hadn't even thought about those teams, but honestly, Everton have made some amazing signings. Moise Keane. How the hell have they got him? He, I thought he was like Juventus' next big thing, and they've let him go to Everton for peanuts. 18 million or something? Like I think it's... Well, I don't think it's that. I think it's 27. But still, in today's market, if Nathan Ake is going for £75 million, pounds, <laughs> how the hell... If Nathan is Ake it... is going for £75 million, pounds, what is Ben Godfrey worth? <laughs> <laughs> Like, seriously, Everton have made some excellent signs. They've got that Gomez in midfield now, again, from Barcelona. He was only 22 million. Yeah. Uh, like, they've got a replacement okay, now so... as well for that uh, Idris Gay or whatever his name was. He went yeah. to PSG. They've got a replacement for him now. Like, 
Everton are making some really clever top signings. So my top four are Man and City. Wolves as well. Wolves signed that. Uh, what's his name from Portugal? Of course, that's signed yeah. Portugal players. Or well, that striker yeah, from Milan or whatever his name is. Catron, is it? Oh yeah. So they're signing him, and obviously Wolves just with their defense in this league, they're an excellent team. See, I would, I would say, I said Man Did City. I forget about the them. They might finish top. Oh, never mind. I don't know. Right, so Man City to win the league, Tottenham to finish second, Liverpool third. Arsenal fourth, uh, fifth I would say Chelsea. Uh, le- one of the three Leicester, Everton, Wolves. I can't decide which one. For the sake of this, I'm gonna actually say Everton will mm. finish sixth, and then because I don't think Wolves will simply because they've also got the Europa League, whereas Everton don't. So I yeah. think that will be a factor. I think. I think Wolves. I would have. I, I could have said. I mean, Wolves. Honestly, not gonna lie. If they got their act together against teams like Huddersfield, who knows what they might have finished. They could have been. They could have potentially done a Leicester. Like, I'll say it here and now, but Wolves. I think if they hadn't had the Europa League, that I think they could could have grabbed a Champions League place. But the Europa League is such a slog. Uh, I think every team ends up finding that. Even Everton did when they were in it. Like they ended up struggling in the league because of it. Burnley did exactly the same. Some teams it's good for. I think, uh, but obviously, you know, Arsenal and all those kind of teams. They they manage to rest their best players and they end up putting in youngsters. They still kind of scrape their way through, and then yep. when they get to the bigger teams, they start taking them a bit more seriously. I don't think but, Wolves will necessarily be able to afford to put their youngsters exactly. in. Exactly. That's what I'm so, saying. So that's where that's where teams like that. Maybe, I think maybe then say if they if they win their first four games, they could do that for the last two, and then give mm. them all the yeah. players an opportunity to rest. Yeah, but, that would be uh, one thing. But yeah, there we are. Um, obviously, Everton, yeah, top top signings, but you never know. I'm still unsure of uh, their manager, Silver. I think obviously it was at Hull, Watford, and Everton. Um, I don't know. I'm still unsure of him slightly, as in every, every club he's been at, they've still hit like a period of poor form in every season. I know that does happen. You yeah. can't bet. But when you're challenging for like maybe top six, for example, you can't, you can't, really, you can't afford have, to let um, it extend. Some, yeah, some of the long poor runs like he's had with Everton last season, even with the great players. I think their main weakness as well with him is defence as well. I do think they'll be he, fine. I he, think with he, the players they've got this year, as well as the fact that they've got players that can rotate. Mm. So they've still got some of the players who were first team last year mm. will now become back up. Mm. And I think they were good enough last year. So I think when the players who are first team will struggle, they will be able to step in mm. and take over. Yeah. And yeah, to be fair, I do hope Leicester do well as well. I really hope they could challenge for the Europa League place because I think I they deserve it. it. I'd love to see, honestly, what uh, just one of my best Champions League memories, just watching the Champions League because it's such an enjoyable competition, is seeing how loud and amazing the King Power Stadium was when Atletico Madrid came to town. I would watching say that, that I was, I was, you know, I was shouting, I was cheering them on, not being a fan, but just. I, I just loved it. I found it incredible watching them. My favourite Champions League memory has to be when Tottenham played Inter Milan. When Tottenham were like new to be, being oh, in Champions Bale. League football. And Gareth Bale, did, did he score four or did he just score a hat-trick? I think he scored a hat-trick and every goal was the same. <laughs> it was Yeah, it was literally, he was on the right. At, no, he was on the left. Right? Left, yeah. And, and he, he was, was against just one of the and, best right-backs at the time, I think. Yeah, and he just tore him a new one. I loved that match. Um, that, that was brilliant. I remember watching that, actually. I do remember watching that. I mean, you've got to say... And weren't they 4-0 down? Uh, yeah, I think so. And then go for 4-3, three, I think it got back. back to, yeah. It was incredible to watch. But I also do think, uh, like, two of the best are, obviously, from last season. Those two comebacks are just insane. Like, Champions League comebacks... Tottenham coming back in the last second and Liverpool beating Barcelona by winning 4-0 is just insane. I was cheering both of those matches off. I did not I like the Liverpool it. one. <laughs> For Liverpool fans watching this, I'm sorry, my bias will be very clear, but I, I don't like Liverpool. Um, but honestly, to beat Barcelona 4-0... 
I mean, yeah, I'll, after gi- I'll give not him credit. Expecting I anything. do, however, think in to say in English football we talk about sporting behaviour. Mm. Liverpool's fourth was not very sporting. To walk it was off, clever. to walk off. Yeah, it was clever. Don't get me wrong; it was good gamesmanship. But in terms of sportsmanship, which is what we go on about all the time, you know, it, if that was Leeds doing that, they would be hounded by the media. <laughs> they would have been like you look at. Um, when Leeds, and I know this is obviously we're talking about the Premier League, but when Leeds played Aston Villa and Leeds scored that goal, mm. yesterday against Bristol City, Bristol City tried to do the exact same thing to Leeds. <laughs> Did you, do you remember watching it? I don't think I saw that bit. No. Did you not? But basically, um, so Leeds scored... What was it? What was it that happened? Um, Matej yeah. Klitsch went down with an injury. Yeah, and, and Aston Villa didn't put it out. No, no, no. That was uh, I'm on about yesterday, and uh, Bristol City carried on playing. Mm. Montez Click was down, and I was like, "Hang on a second. Are people going to kick off about this?" Mm. Commentators didn't say. Well, commentators obviously acknowledged the fact that it would have been similar, but yeah. you know how the commentator in the at the Leeds and Aston Villa one was like, "That's a disgrace." Mm. This, yeah, com- yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. I know it was different commentators, but they didn't. Mm. There was no criticism of them for trying it. So here's another question: Who is coming up to the Premier League? Oh, who's been promoted? Yeah. Uh, Who will be playing in Premier League football 2020, 2020? If they keep up what they did last season and make a few minor improvements, I'd say Leeds. I and I also kind of hope Leeds, just because they were so close last year. I actually did feel yeah, kind but it would be sorry funny just to see them. Failing, failing at what everyone would love it, wouldn't they? But oh, yes. I just... Yeah, I think Leeds. I think... Uh... Well, both relegated sides have lost so far. And Huddersfield are playing right now uh, as we're filming this. Yes. So, um... But yeah, both relegated sides are lost, haven't they, so, so far? Yeah. Fulham and Cardiff. So, but I should I, I expect <laughs> at least surprise, at me. least one of them to be in the playoffs at the end of the season. So potentially one of them. And um, also, if they get it together, I think West Brom just also because they got Slavin Bilic now in charge, and he's an excellent manager. Uh, and I think he could be the one who he could. I be actually overlooked West, Brom, West you know. Brom. I think he could be the thing that gets them promoted. Uh, however, they, they have got. Uh, they instead of James, no, instead of Jay Rodriguez and Dwight Gale up front, they've now got Kenneth Sahor. So, I mean, that's a slight change. Yeah, uh, I'd rather <laughs> stick with my uh, Gale <laughs> and Rodriguez. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> whether they'll be able to get as many goals, I don't think they will, but they may be more solid. So, we'll see about that. I think. So I think hopefully kind of Leeds, West Brom, one of Fulham and Cardiff maybe. Yeah. At this current I time, would... but you never know. Who expected Norwich to go last season? I season's? would say I we, think we could, we could might as well say oh, uh, uh, Barnsley. Yeah, Barnsley or Bar- Charlton will get promoted. Yeah, there we go. I predict Charlton right now. I'll put a bet on. I mean, you never know, but Charlton will go up to the Premier League. Um, There's no budget whatsoever, but this is football, so screw it. Are you doing fantasy Premier League? Uh, no, I haven't. No, just because I would never keep up with it. And yeah, same. I mean, I, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try doing it this yeah. year. Yeah, I won't get. I won't keep up with it. It's just that's another thing to think about. Uh, so if I showed you my team, I'll let you rate my team. I would need to download it onto this phone. I'll show you later. But basically, I have Angus Gunningo. Good choice. Right back, Max Aaron. <laughs> Not Tim Krull. You can only have so many Norwich players. <laughs> right back of Max Aaron. Yeah. Centre backs, I have Ryan Bennett, and I did. I did have Decent. Laporte, but he's got seventy-five percent chance of playing because he's obviously picked up a knock. Um, I can't remember who the other one, other centre back was. Left back, I've got Joel Ward. Mm. I've got. Nathan Redmond, left mid. I've got James Madison and James Ward-Prowse. 
Central mid. So even if they're not current Norwich players, they're former Norwich players. <laughs> see, you see my thinking here. Um, yeah. Right um, mid. Who did I put on the right? I don't. I don't remember. And then up front, I've got Aguero and Puki. <laughs> oh, no, I've got Brendia on the right. How could I forget? Oh, my part, entire right side two. is all Norwich. We'll see how that goes anyway. But yeah. Yes. We've only got one bar battery left. Yeah, I know. Oh. I'm gonna. I'm going to uh, wrap it up now. Yeah. We've been going for 40 odd minutes, so it's fine. Sweet. It's yeah, well, I mean, we said, you know, top six. We said yeah, top six. Uh, we said there'll teams, be a surprise. So. Did you say that there'd be a surprise one in there? There may be. There may well be. I, To be fair, I'd hope there is. I'd, I'd, I'd love know, it if there was. It's just nice to have a break up of the top six at times. That season where Leicester won the title, for me, was the most entertaining Premier League season. Excellent season. Like, you kind of went from thinking, oh, I won't last, oh, I won't last, oh, I won't, oh, it's going to last. All of a sudden, there's like five games left, and it's like, they're going to do it. They're actually going to do it. It's incredible. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you've managed to make it this far. Congratulations, you have no life. Um, <laughs> we always say that. <laughs> yes, we always do, because our videos take so long. And, yeah. Um, Super. Yeah, let me know your predictions down below comment them uh if you think i'm right if you think tom's more right let us know uh i would like to say i'm not far off obviously everybody thinks that they're not far off but i do think norwich will be I think okay the main difference if there will be any uh comments is like the fact that i think liverpool are brilliant and you hate them so that'll be the i'm gonna get a lot of hate on this <laughs> if, if there's many liverpool fans watching oh yeah by the time i get back from london I'm going to just have hate comment after hate <laughs> comment. And I'm going to love it. Yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah, go on then. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, let us know what you think of our predictions. Obviously, I'm very much... Oh, yeah, that's what else I was going to do, actually, before we before we wrap up. I'll just edit this further in. Uh, predict the games. So, if opening games. Liverpool-Norwich. Very quick. Do it quick fire. Liverpool-Norwich. 3-0. Uh, to, live, to Norwich? To Liverpool. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. West Ham Man City. Uh, West Ham at home. Uh, yep. 3 1. To, Bo to West Ham? To, uh, to Man City. Man City. You've got to tell me which team. Come yeah, on. Right, right. Bournemouth, Sheffield United. Um, 2 1. Bournemouth. Burnley, Southampton. Uh, 1 1. Crystal Palace, Evan. Um, 2-2 Watford Brighton um, 3-1 three, three, Watford Tottenham Villa 2-1 um, Spurs Leicester Wolves I don't even think we're uh, <laughs> One one. Newcastle Arsenal. Four one Arsenal. Man U Chelsea. This is the last one. Man U. That's the biggest game of the weekend, really, isn't it? Yeah. Hundred percent. Uh, that could go anyway. Uh, I'd say. Um. Chelsea scored a lot of goals, but they can't defend. Uh, um. <laughs> In pretty season, anyway. I feel like that sums up most teams in the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, end stone match, 3-2 Chelsea. Okay. I'm going to go 2-1 Liverpool. West Ham Man City will be 3-1 three, three, Man City. 2-0 to Bournemouth against Sheffield United. Southampton will beat Burnley 2-1. Crystal Palace and Everton will be 3-0 to Everton. Watford will beat Brighton 2-0. Tottenham will beat Aston Villa 3-1. Hmm. Leicester will... No, Leicester Wolves will be like 2-2. And I was just scored again. Leicester Wolves will be 2-2. Um, James Madison will get one in that one. Newcastle and Arsenal will be... 3-0 to Arsenal. And my new Chelsea will be like 2-2 or something. 
I don't know. I think that one you can't really predict. It's too no. close. Okay, good finish. Um, yeah, but yeah, so great. that will be it for this video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like if you've enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And if you want more Norwich content, then of course subscribe because we're going to be season yeah, ticket holders. Yeah, uh, by I the can't wait when this video, I cannot wait. When this video goes up, I'll be in London. But uh, yeah, so until the next video, I will see you then.